All right. So for okay for this training, we're going to go through Selenium end to end using page objects, and so we've covered this in almost like two two or three months now. So it's going to be end to end from beginning to the end. So so go us go through with me on this journey. All right. First thing you want to create a new project five new project and then we want to use Maven so you click on next so the group ID like I said you want to use gifsreach.com so but we want to use the dev one so that will be So we want to say So, okay, let's just give that as a group ID and our Aktifa ID is that one. So from there, you click Next and you specify where you want it to be stored. I think I've got training so finish so I want it to be open to the new window all right so now like in the first two sessions we went through uh, how to create everything from uh, how to get our test ng form files and everything so but today i'm not going to go through that again i'm just going to copy and paste from beginning of where we have everything on the website so first thing i think you have your i'll just go through this when you have, you have your this our training um, project and you have your slc and you have your main and your test. So I saw some people have got issues. They put their test pack packages inside main. No, you shouldn't do that. All your tests should go into the test package. So, and we go through from there right now. So the first file I want to mention is your pond for, um, folder. So, which is open right now. So in your pond folder, you, which is created for, for moving. So you have your group ID, which you created before, and that is this. And you have your artifact ID also, which is that one we've created, and the same thing with the version. So this remains the same. So if you don't, if you use a different uh, group ID, different uh, artifact ID and versions, you're going to see this will be different. So bear that in mind this will remain the same as exactly as it is but these ones will be different so the first thing that we want to do update our pawn so if you go to um, blue sky Go to Blue Sky Citadel and I think courses. Go to the blog. You have all the uh, courses that we've, we've done. So I'm looking for where we. So in here you have the pond. 
and you have the runner and you have the test engine. So I'll open the pawn sample pawn first. So so the sample pawn is this one that we've created before, and so. I just need the dependencies. I don't need, like I said, this might be different from what I've got. So uh, I need dependencies. So I copy the dependencies up to where the project is. So that is what I want to copy. I leave the project tag. So that's what I want to copy. Then, so I will paste what I've copied in here. So that is pasted. Okay, that uh, will be imported. So, as does so. Then also, what that is going through, I said also I mentioned about your Maven projects uh, sections. So you want to have that window open also. So that you can claim your moving stop. Yeah, so then sometimes you need that uh, to import everything. So if you are doing this and you have any red, yeah, so that means you've not imported everything correctly. So I would say you click on import uh, uh, dependencies or you clean, or sometimes if it's not working also, you can do validate also to get everything sorted. Okay, now the next one that we need to do is our test engine. So what you need to do is right click on your project and then new, you want to create new file. So you want to create test ng docs xml. So that one also, it's we need to get that here. Yeah, which is that one. So this is a file right now that we need to now copy. So I just need to create that, finish creating that. Testng.xml. So which is this one. So the next I need to copy that. Okay, so after this one, the next one is your runner and your, uh, you got a package called runner and you got your class called test runner. So the first thing I create my runner package. So which will be under my test, under my Java. So I create a new package and I call, I call it runner. So just to be sure, I can copy this. So, so I don't make any typo error. New package and I paste that. So that will be my package. So as you can see, that is green now. The next one is for me to create a class called 
test runner. So that should live inside your package called test runners. So new Java class. So if you go to your test ng again, you see everything there. So then your test runner is this one. So the content of test runner also, I think we have a sample on the site. So if you go again to the site, we have sample runner. So I will open that again. So I can copy. Yeah, because my package is the same thing and my class is the same thing. So in essence, I can copy the old uh, code here and paste in my code. But if your package is different and your class that you created is different, then you should update accordingly. For in this one, I'll just copy everything and paste it. Okay, so I'll claim just to be sure and more often and also compile that I don't have any error messages at all. Compile. So then after that, we talk about our feature files that you need to do. Okay, cool. So now we've used our sample test engine, we've used our pawn, and then also we also use our rudder. So I think that is is everything that you need to do in terms of setup. So, so the next one now is your the structure that you need to set up. One, you you will need to set up your feature files. You need to set up your uh, test definition and all the rest like that. So the first thing I want to set up will be my feature files, which I want to put in a resource folder. So at this level, at my test level, I right click that and I can create a new resource directory. I call it resource. Oh. Let us see resources. Okay, and um, to to actually uh, let everything map together, uh, I'll let me. You need to make sure because we got our features here. Yeah? yeah, feature is equal to SRC test resources and features. So that directory has to map with what you have here. So your feature files should be stored in this location. So now. I'm creating as I'm creating it from this part. SRC test. The next level is resources, which is what I'm creating right now. So I'll say okay. So I've got that right now. Test and resources. So the next one is my features under resources. But before I do that, I need to make this particular one directory a resource root. So so it's now a resources root. So I'll do that. So then after that I'll create my another uh, directory and I'll call that directory features. 
which in lines with what I've got here. And I say, okay. So this is where I'll, I will put my feature files right now, which is the given when then, so in written in Cucumber. So I would click new, file. So let's say I am doing uh, login, login dot feature. Okay, so apparently I think Cucumba is not yet mapped to this at all. So, okay. I cancel that first. Can as well. Okay, so what you need to do, if I remember, is settings. You need to add plugin for Cucumba. So search for Cucumba. Then search in repository. So you need to install that. You only need to install this once because this is kind of a new environment that I am using right now for this last session. So I uh, need to do that. So once you've done that, you only need to do that for your IntelliJ once and that's it. So, okay. Okay. So it's going to ask me to restart IntelliJ, which I should do. Okay, so while that is done, so then we can be able to create our feature files as it is. So after that, we need to create other four other files also. So we need to create a folder for our page object. Uh, we've created a folder for our runner, and then we need to create a folder or package rather for the step definitions. So, I don't, okay, I think it's not starting by itself. I think IntelliJ. So, okay, so this is not the one that we're using. So I'll close this, I'll open a new one. No, I didn't open the other one. Fine. Okay, all right. I think this is this is the one that I'm waiting for, so I can actually close this one. Okay, so as you can see now, my login files has got that Kikimba logo because Kikimba is now installed, so I can open that. When I open that, as we know, I'm not going to go into what Kikimba is, how does it go, so we've done that before. It's the first thing you want to, the first keyword is features. So you want to have your feature for, 
right. No, let's say I think we went to do login. So then after that, you can have your description here, like say this is to this login page. So then the next one after that is your scenario. So in your scenario, you want to specify the scenario that you want to test which is, let's say, valid login. Okay, so here yeah, now I want to, the first one I want to say, I want to have access to the site first, and then after that, uh, I want to access the site as a precondition, then I when I log in, that means I enter my username and password, then I should be logged in. So to do that, I can say given I navigate to the site, oh, let's say, or to the site when I enter oh the first thing click on login link and I enter username and I enter password Okay, so to go through it manually, this is what we are trying to do. So when you go to this site and you click on login and you want to enter username that we've done. Want to enter this username and we want to enter password also. I click on secure sign. So then you should be able to sign in. How do you know you sign in? Issue one, we can verify that this is this logout is displayed or the name is displayed. That those are different ways. And also you can also confirm that you don't you did not actually find any error message at all. So for instance, if I go to a login and I put invalid login there and I click on login you will see that error message be displayed. So you can verify that that error message is not displayed. That's one, or you also verify that the username is displayed at the top or the login. So I think depending on what you want to do. So, all right, that's what we want to do actually. So let's go back. So and I click secure sign in button then that's my assertion now I should be logged in so I can as well say then I should not see 
uh, login error message. So maybe that's what I want to do. So, okay, that is that now. I've written my uh, fe uh, feature steps for valid login. So now I need to write my step definition. So for each of these steps, there will be underlining code to actually specify what this line actually means. As you can see, this is what is um, it's called Gherkin language, it's English, and the computer does not actually understand that. So what you need to do is to now convert that into a language that the computer understands in Java. So each of the steps, you have to write what that means in, in Java. So which means that given a navigate to give read their site, you need to underline uh, Java code that should navigate that particular site. You need to write it. So that is written in your step definition. So for you to create your step definition, let's create a new folder first and so that we can put that in that folder. So as you can see, be careful where you put all these things. My, res my feature files, uh, I will be putting them in resources folder under um, features. But when it comes to my step definition, I want to put it under Java because it's going to be a J Java code that I have to write. So the same way also this is Java code. So there are going to be different classes. So I now need to create a new um, package. I call the package. Okay, before I do that, I need to, you need to see what's going to happen now because everything should tie it back to your, uh, yeah, to your test runner. Inside my test runner, I said I've got, I've got, uh, we've been able to do this, right? The next is your glue right now that we need to do, which is the one that actually, as the name implies, it glues or it combines or binds your step definition to your feature files. So which means that uh, this way I have got my feature files and then look into this, step, uh, this path, you will see my step definition. Inside this package, you see my step definition. So when I'm going to be creating my uh, package for my step definition, it should be this name. So which means that if you change that name and you don't actually put this name, you need to make sure you come here and change the name you call your package for your step def definition. To make it easy, I'll use this name for my step definition. So I go into my Java, right click, create new. I want to create a new package and I want to call it as it is in my glue. And that is that. So that is that created. So now I've got a package or so to say a folder, but it's actually a package. So it's called step devs. So the next one now, I need to now go to my feature file. So I want to create a step definition for each of this line. So if you be a bit quiet uh, or patient rather, and you put your mouse on this line and wait for a few seconds, you will see kind of a bulb that is displayed here. So you click on that and you have two options. One option is to create step definition and the other is to create all step definition. First thing I would advise people to first create the first one first. Let's see how it's going to be like. So you create your first definition first. Create step definition. The difference between these two, I will point, it, point them out right now. This you will only create one step definition, one step definition for you but this will want to create everything. But on the first instance, I would advise you just create first one first. Then in the next one, you can create all the steps as you go. So let's create the first one. You click on that. So it now asks you the name of your step definition. So I can call my step definition, I can call it, let's say, login steps. So 
so I can call it login steps. So I want it to be Java thing here. No, Java 8. I want it to be Java. So then also the location, I want to store it in my step depth location. So I can click on these three dots. So then go here. And now this is where I want it to be stored. So which is fine for me. Then I can click OK. All right, sometimes this happens, right? So even though I selected the right one, it doesn't actually store that inside my step definition, it stored it outside. So, um, but I actually wanted it to be stored inside my package step devs. So what I can do, I can drag it into that. So, and then it's going to say, do I want to move it into that step dev? Yeah, I can say, yes, please move it. So you can see now it's now moved into that. And you can see the package is at the top. So I've got the package as step devs and my login step is in there. So because if that is not the case, uh, my test runner will have issues because my glue says my step definitions are stored in step depths. And in the last point, there's no package at all that was created for that login step. So now we've got our first uh, login, our first uh, step definition. So which is the given, given I navigate to give it and that's what you have. So the next one that you want to do is create the other ones. So create the other ones. Before I create the other ones, as you can see, this one that we've created for us is not highlighted again, where the other ones are still highlighted. So in kind of brownish color or thereabouts. So, and yeah, so this is already been bound with a step definition. So if you right click and you say go to step definition, it will take you to where that is, as you can see. So, and I said the next one that we need to do is to create this definition for all these ones. So what you need to do is to click on the bulb, if you've seen it, and now at this time, create all step definitions. So, and it's going to ask you, do you want to create a new file or you want to put it in the old step definition that we've created? So yes, I want to create it in the old step definition. So I'll put that there. Okay, so now you can see I've created all other ones. So that is everything created. So now we got our step definitions and we got our feature files everything all good. So, but you can see this is going to throw exceptions because we still have some pending uh, stuff to do because at this point, even from the comment, you can see it said, write your code here that turns this phrase into concrete actions. So what you, you are meant to write here now, what exactly is the code to navigate to on um, gift rich dev site. You need you then put that in re, in place of this throw new pending exceptions. So and then on and on like that. So but before we do that, we need to also create another epa class which are I call hook. We need to create an epa class which I call hook that This EPA class will help us to uh, to create. We we can we, we can use that hook to start our process. Firstly, like when you want to start our web driver, you want to open your browser. You can put it in your before scenario before anything starts. You want to the first thing you want to do is 
get your browser open. So some some actually ask me that, oh, what if I don't want to use hook? Yes, you might not need to do use that hook, but if you don't want to use it, we can actually put everything in our maybe given condition. So maybe we should just use it to make it simple right now. So just, okay, let's put everything in our given condition, in our given and navigate to give it. So now from here, I want to navigate to give it. I want to open give it. What are the process? What do I need to do? The first thing I need to open my browser. Then after I open my browser, I need to navigate to the um, Giftrix web page. So to open the browser, the first thing that you need to do is to set your properties, set your system properties, and then also open, um, decide on which browser you want to use. So you can decide to say, okay, I want to use Chrome, I want to use Firefox or Mozilla or anything that you want to use. But today we'll uh, I, I will take the question at the end of this session if that's okay. So unless if it's kind of pressing questions. So so that we this um, we can go in, in, in this flow. But yeah, you can type the question anyway, so I'll see if yeah, I need to answer it. Yeah, okay, type the question if I think it's relevant. How. So now, what we need to do now is to set up our um, properties. So this is uh, systems. Dot set properties, set property, so then it's going to take two parameters from you. The first thing is the type of um, driver that you are trying to set and the location of that particular driver that you are setting. The first one is going to be in the code and the other one also will be in another code. So then I put that here. So it's going to take two properties for two parameters from you. One is the driver that you want to set, whether it's a Gecko driver or Chrome driver, and the other one is the location of the uh, Gecko driver or Chrome driver. So let's say we're using Gecko driver. So I'll say web driver dot Gecko dot driver then also here now I need to specify the location of the driver so what you need to do is to okay what you need to do now is to go to Google and say download gecko driver Download Gecko driver, so I think that takes me here. So, and I've got different ones, okay. So, if you are using Windows, you select the version. If you are using Windows 32 or Win64, you select the one that you are using. And if you are using Linux, that is specified the one that you 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 want, and also 
on Mac. Okay, so I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download this one. Okay, so this is the folder. So now, this is what I'm going to do to make life easy also. Okay, so to make life easy, I'm going to create another package here. So I think there's a question, one minute. Okay, I think I'll go just follow. Let's see if I'm able to answer your question from the step that I'm going to go through right now. So, okay. So the next step right now, after I have downloaded the Gecko, right? I've got the Gecko downloaded here. So, and what I can do is to create a folder on my resource uh, folder, I can call it driver or drivers. So, which means that even if I want to use Chrome, I will also put everything there. So, this is going to house everything. So, I can copy the copy and I paste it here inside the paste. not pasted. I think I need to unzip something. I need to unzip it first anyway. Okay. Let's just try to unzip that. So I can copy that and put it in my, let me try that again. If that does not work, I can just paste it in this location directly. So just to make sure it's easy for people. So paste it. Okay, all right, cool. So unzip and just paste it. So, and that should be fine. So now I've got my Gecko driver in that location. So. So let's go back to where we are right now. So we are at the login step. Okay. I said the log, the first thing we want to do, we want to go to, you want to navigate to the browser. But the first thing we need to do is set our properties, right? So I said this takes two parameters. The first one is the type of the driver that you are taking. So if you are going to be using, uh, um, Firefox or Chrome or Mozilla, so depending on what you're going to use. So if you are going to use uh, Chrome is webdriver dot Chrome dot driver. So instead of Gecko, you put Chrome there and you specify the location of that Chrome. You still you need to do the same thing, download it and so for get for Firefox that we are going to use, we are using the Gecko driver. So, and the location right now is here. So, and this location, as you can see, is SLC, test, resource, and drivers. So we can put that location as it is 
right now. So is SRC test resources drivers and yeah so this is a bit that most people get it wrong i would say now what is my driver code it's called gecko driver dot exe so that is what i need to put there gecko driver dot exe so that is what i need to put in there so in some cases because people that are using mark if you are using mark and you downloaded this one right you downloaded this so in i think it yeah well i'm sure this is what you will write because there's no exe for mark and that's what you write so and so if you if you copy this and the one i'm using for window and you put it in your it's not going to work so and the same way also if you copy from one environment to the other and one using windows and one that using mac so that's not going to work you need to download the right gecko for that particular device that you're using so i'm using windows so i'll put that so that is a bit so and also from people now find that i can I, I cannot see my driver you find that edge error so what you would do is make sure you go to this location as in navigate to that location by yourself and confirm that you can actually find that driver okay someone actually say can i right click okay let's say right click copy path so and say and you put it here okay so that that is another option because this is kind of relative to to where you yeah this is kind of relative but as uh, absolute rather this kind of absolute path to where your files are so you can also do the same thing like that so it gives you the absolute path to where your gecko driver is stored but i have all now put the absolute to this particular framework that we are using so but you can as well do the same thing and copy path yeah okay so that is that for system properties for how to set your properties so when you've done that the next one is your driver so you want to now bring up your driver mr driver please i need your help so but before you do that you need to call web driver you need to instantiate web driver so that will come at the top of your class so you scroll to the top so now I'm going to, I need to instantiate my web driver. So, and I'm calling it driver. So it's basically that I want to use a driver, but now I want to call it something web driver. Okay. Yeah. okay so yeah so mr driver is actually a um, son under web driver so this small driver it's actually written as um, web driver is is a code that's written by selenium and then and now i'm using that so anything that i want to call that is already been housed inside web driver who i will have access to them by calling mr driver it's basically like in a car actually so when you have a car and you don't know what's in the hood you can actually drive the car without having knowing 
much of what is inside. So that's what driver is going to do for us. We don't know what is inside web driver, but we know that anything that we want that we want to use driver for, it should go into that web driver and do that for us. Exactly. So yeah. So this driver is taking us to yeah exactly to the promised land. Let's let's see how that goes. So now the first thing we want to say yeah we know you, Mr. Driver, but what is what type of browser do you want to use? So we need to now map that with the browser that you want to use. We want to say oh our driver now is going to be a new instance of Firefox driver so it's like our driver is going to drive Firefox so we got mr. driver and you need a, it needs a car so our car is the um, Firefox driver so it's the browser that mr. driver is going to drive so henceforth now it's going to be we calling mr. driver and saying what mr. driver should do every time so that is what is going to happen right now. At this point, we've been able to, this is what is going to happen, set up our Excel file and also the properties and also file for, um, say, okay, we need our driver to be linked to Firefox. So from henceforth, it's going to be um, opening Firefox for us. So, I need to confirm because this is a new system I use. If it's got Firefox, okay, cool. It's got Firefox there. Okay, brilliant. And you need also to be sure, another thing is to be sure that the Firefox that, the, um, the version of Firefox that you have is also compatible to the Gecko driver that you have. You need to, you need to also confirm that. So you can see this is, I think it should say which version is compatible. Yeah. So this is for Firefox 54, 57 and above. So, and if I open my Firefox, just to confirm that I've got 57 and above. So I've got 5061, so there's even a recent one, but I will leave it for now until you finish this lesson. Okay, cool. So, and also, you need to also confirm that the Selenium that you have is 3.11 or greater. I do confirm that. You go into your palm. If you go into your palm and you look where Selenium is, is 3.11, so which is fine. So then I think we are okay. So then let's go back to our login step. So now the next one that we need to do is to So as we've done this right now, the next step that we need to do is to fire, fire up uh, the URL that we are talking about. So there are two ways to do that. You can as well say declare that as a string uh, URL is equal to www.http. Okay, so that is the site that you want to log into. Then, 
So that's the site that we want to log into. So we just declare that as a string, and we put that there. So the next one is to go to that site directly. So we need the help of Mr. Driver. Mr. Driver dot. So what are you going to do? Get the driver for us. Get the URL for us. So you can see we got some intelligence here. It's saying okay, get, and it's looking for string URI. So and we can just put that inside. You are right. So which is a string that is going to navigate to that. And that should navigate to that particular site for us. So then the next one now that we need to do is click on login link. Click on login link. So what do we do? We click on the login link. So this is the place that we need now to bring another view to say, okay, let us go to the site. So if you go to the home page again, so we want to click on this login. So the first thing you do, you inspect the element. Right click and click on inspect. So that should take us here, right? So you have different ways to, uh, I think we've gone through different ways to identify your elements. So in this regard, let's, the first attempt we can say, let's use SPath, let's see what that brings to us. Okay, so that, okay. One well, I minute mean, before we do that, I said we're going to use page objects to be honest. So, so we're going to use page objects for for this level. We are not going to use the conventional one. So let's go back. Okay, as right now as you can see, of course, there will be an uh, issue that people face. So my project, where's my project? Ah, oh, it's gone. So people sometimes complain, oh, so you got different view and tools windows, you see your projects, you can click on your projects and that appears for you. I think you can even just tag it so, so that it doesn't go again. Okay, so, all right. So the next one is our page objects. So I can create another package yeah and I call it page objects so and I call it page objects so when I call that page objects now I want to create page objects for the login page and also for the home page and for everything so the first thing let's say I am on the home page right now and I want to create the page object for that particular page. So what I need to do is to come here, new, then class. So I create a page and I create a class. I can call the class home page. Okay. Before I do that, I think we've been doing a lot of things right now. Let me try to run this test, just be sure it's fine. Before I do that, I'll stop on that one right now. So just to be sure it's working. So I'm just compiling the code to so it's error free. So it's a good practice to make sure you compile your code as you go along. So and after that is finished, so I'll run the code. You can test or you can go and run from the feature file.
So let's cross our fingers that we've not done anything by mistake and everything is fine, our environment is fine. Okay, still looking good. Downloading, brilliant. Okay, starting the test. Okay, cool. So this is the feature file. Okay. So I said, if you see any of this pink code, as long as it's no error, so you can just leave it. Okay, so we got an error message. Oh, okay. So we got issue with Firefox. So let's see what it's saying about that. Okay, so let's run it again. So I think Firefox just updated, so which I didn't want to do before. So I need to stop that one. Okay, let's run the test again. So basically, it's only this one that we are trying to, to run to be sure it's fine because we've not actually created the other ones. So and so that we were sure that works. So after that, we continue with when you log in the link, so this is, we are running the test again, just to be sure. That was, wasn't a fluke. So. Okay. Uh, I think it sometimes when it's running, make sure I've, it's a good practice to see what exactly it's doing. So you try to read through and uh, so for as long as you are not seeing an error message, you should, you should be fine.
Okay, cool. So that, that is that. So, all right, so we just close it. Okay. So, okay, so that is cool. So now we continue from there, all right? So I'm doing the next one. So we are on your page object. So let's go to the page object. So now we need to create our page object. So what we need to do is right click and click on new and class. I said we want to create home page. So on the home page, we want to create our home page. So then we click on OK. So this is our own page, it's on the page object. So then, so what we need to do now, of course, we need our page factory. We need our page factory. We need, it's kind of a folder you put all your page objects inside, actually. So you need, you need to create that. So what you need to do is now, we need your page factory, you need your web driver. You need Mr. Driver also to help you at this particular point. So, and this is what you need to do. First thing, we create our web driver. And we call this, to call it driver. Oh, sorry. I think I put it on the wrong location. It has to be inside your class, sorry. So, maybe I need a break actually. So, okay, import that class. So, then the next one I said, you need your page factory to be initialized. So at this point, you create a constructor for the page, um, for the home page. A constructor is a method that has got the same name as a class. So if you are creating a constructor, that constructor should, should be a method. But that method will not have any return type, only have the access, uh, accessibility, and then also will have the same name as the, the class. So, to do that, public, so I said it has to be same name as your class. So, we want to set up that, and then we want to pass web driver inside. And you open that up. So we want to use the page factory. So page factory dot init element. Then you want to put the driver. Then this driver. So. So that is the skeleton for this goes across as you create every uh, page object. You need to do similar things. Your web driver will be there, your class, your class, and also the constructor for the class, then the page factory, which initializes the driver and map everything together. So that is that. So the next one now is now when you start to create the different elements that you have on the page. The first element that I want to create is the, uh, that particular one for the login. So we want to say find at finds by. If 
passed by. Yeah. So at what are we finding and how are we finding? That's what you need to put into into that. So you can see it's even helping you to say what you want. So how how what's your offspring? So the first thing that I want to do is how how are we finding what we are finding? How is equal to how dot how dot and I say we need to use as path. So and as you can see say alt enter to so I press alt enter import class. Okay. S path. Come on. And the next is using. So what are we using? So that's where your S path comes inside. So we've gone here. We've said copy S path. So we now paste it inside the code. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I, I actually frown at this that you should not use absolute S path. This is not a good way to do so. We are not going to use this in this video. So what we're going to use, let's use the CSS, okay? Let's use CSS selector. Okay. CSS selector. Oh, that also is kind of each okay so that we're not using I'm not using that also so I think the best approach is going to be that login is a link so let's use the link text login a login is a link so we're going to use the link text so okay so this is the element that this is how we want to find element but having said that, so what's the name? What do we want to give that element? That's the next um, line. So we declare that element as private, and which is web element. And it's what is it called? Login. Maybe login link. So that is the name of that element. So now, at this point now, the, we already found our element. So what do we want to do on the element? What do we want to do element? So what do we want to do on the element? We create another method for that. So the actions on the method on that particular element, we create another method for that. So what you want to do on this element is you want to click on this element. So, and I will create a method and I will call it, um, which is going to be void. And I'm going to call that method, uh, Click on login link. Okay. So, but what is the element that I want to click on? That's the login link. That's that one. So, and then dot click. So this is it. So what's going to happen now, anytime you call this particular method, it goes into, uh, into this step and you say, oh, login link. What is login link? It goes to the top and, okay, this is a web element. Oh, login link is a web element. Which type of web element is it and how do I find it? So you say, okay, you can find this element by link text. And this is the 
link itself login so then it finds it and then this particular property it asks you to click on it so that's what you need to do so like i said the first thing you find your element then your actions of that what you want to do on that element you put it in the under method so that's how to to do that in page objects so this is our page object created for that particular link so then how do you use this page object now in our step definition so you go to your step definition so and here now i want to click on login where is that click on login okay so i need to remove that so the first thing is where is my you want to specify where exactly do you have your uh, home page where you have your home page and that you want to click on as in what you want to click on where what class is it so the first thing you you bring that class in there to make it easy uh, this is what I'm going to do I'm going to this is my my the name of my class is home page and that class is where I've got, I want to click yeah first thing you initialize the instantiate the class so you instantiate the class where when you want to use it dot no sorry you instantiate the class home page then home page is equal to new home page so this is how to instantiate the class but because this class is not in this package in this step um, package is in the page object package you need to import it so IntelliJ also does that for you automatically so you, you can see it's not resolved but by pressing alt enter that should import that automatically for you let's see what we have this is everything that will be imported so but if you now press alt enter on this that should also come as per alt let me bring this one down okay alt enter so import class so you can see that is imported so for yeah for now you import it right now for as you can see if i go to that it's looking for driver it's looking for driver so you need to add driver inside that so that is you instantiate instantiated that particular web um page i'll put capital p just to be yeah so the next one now you now need to call that uh, properties that we created that method that we created home page dot so you can see click on login link so you can now click on it and that is that so that is going to go into the home page and like that if you if you press on um, hold your click hold your control and click on it it takes you into this and then you can see that takes you into that so you can so that takes you to that particular name and then it's basically so it goes into that name get the element and then click on that so let's go back so that is what it's going to do for you so the next one now is when you enter your username so what's going to happen is you click on login
Yeah, so where are we instantiating the driver? So we are not using a static hook at all. If you're using static hook, you don't need to instantiate anywhere again. So you just need to be calling it from from the hook, actually. So that one and it's static across everywhere. But in this regard, because we are not using the hook, we are not using any static driver. So you need to make sure you you instantiate it, and also you bring it into into your driver. Okay, now let's continue. So the next one, I think we we are not doing very well on time. But okay, we start to f try to finish this quickly. So the next one is your username and password. So let's go through that. So this is under page. So I can put it in my own page, but that's not the wise decision. So you want to create a new page object for that. So this is what I'm going to do. Create a new page object and I call it now. It's the login. New class and I call it login page. So same thing, same logic, same process. I can just do the same thing. I'll be careful so that it doesn't fall into the trap of copy and paste. So automatically, yeah, I need those ones. But now you want to change that to your page. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I think that's everything done because the name of the class should be the name of that class. So yeah. So the next one now is your object. So I can also just copy and paste without having to waste the login page. So, okay, but in this instance now, I want to get the username and the email address and password. I want to get the e email address and password, inspect. So, uh, in this case, I've got the ID as email. So, let's use the ID. So we want to find by ID. Oh, sorry, ID. And what are we finding? Email. And that is email text box. Okay. So I think we'll do the same thing for the password. It's got ID also. Let's use the ID for that. Okay, so so we have our two objects. So I think there should be the last one, which is the button. So this one has no an ID. It's got a class. So let's see if SPATH is good or CSS selector. Let's see what we have for CSS selector. Okay, I think that is not bad. So let's use that. So first thing, I copy that again. Let's copy. Oh no. Where is that coming from? Okay. So. Copy 
CSS selector. Me using CSS selector and that is dot CSS selector. So um that should be secure sign in but okay so that is that then that is these are all the elements that we want on this particular page object called login page. The next one is the actions. What actions do we want to perform on, upon them? On this one, on these two, we want to type. On this, we want to click. So first one, public void. What do I want to do? I want to enter email or maybe username or whatever you call it, but let's say enter email. So, then, so that's my email. So, dot send key. So I think we got one email from Abdor said so we can use his own email address as a test email. So let's use Abdor email address. You are free to send spams to him anyway. It's fine. It doesn't mind. So uh, the, so. Okay, he said you mind, so please don't send spam to, to read. So, okay. Then, okay, so that is what we want to do for the email. And so we just want to send that key. So the same thing with the password. So we want to do the same thing for password, public, void, enter password. Send keys. So, what are we sending? We're sending the password. So, the next one also, our action. What's going to be the next action is public void click on secure sign in so 
So okay, so that one is the just need to do property so quick. Okay, all right. So yeah, that is that. So now we've got our actions, we've got our elements, so we just need to use all these actions in our step definitions based on what we need. So we just go to login steps and enter email address, enter username, which is enter username. So we just need to call login. Login page. So, what do you want to do on the login page? that we want to enter email address, okay? Same thing goes for here. Oh, this one is not email address, dot, dot, okay. So same thing also goes here. Let's see what we have. So the only one that's pending is this one. So So we only have a few minutes left, I think. That Okay, cool. So, let's see, issue click. Okay, cool. Okay. Then click on sign in. Okay, brilliant. So yeah, that's everything done on that. So the next one is this. Oh, I shouldn't have even stopped it. It's to let's do the easy one actually. I just want to validate that I don't see this. So just on the easier approach, inspect. So, so now, see, copy selector. Okay. So, so same thing, we need to go into our login page, then 
out I'm right out this is not true out dot CSS isn't So we use CSS, we just copy and paste that inside. And what's the name? Private web element. And then error message. And say login. Error message. Okay, so now at this point we want to perform actions on that error message. So what action do you want to perform? We want to say if you display or not. So public at this point is not going to be void. It needs to return something. So it's going to return boolean. So boolean. So is error displayed so this is void means it's not returning anything so because on this one we just click and after that we don't need it, the driver to return anything but this one we want it to return whether it's displayed or not so we want to return it true or false so so here we can say return return so we want to return the login error page dot display is display so if it is displayed it's going to return true if it's not displayed it's going to return false so then we need to use this in our step definition now. Where's the step definition? Yeah, on this one. So how do you use that now? We need to use assert. Assert. We should use assert for n units. Okay. Dot. So is true assert true or assert false? That's assert false, but we're looking for assert true. So we're going to say if that is true, what is true is that we need to put that login also at the top. Login. Is our display. So that is going to, yeah, put that in there. So, so another thing also, a good way, you can see this login page, login page is scattered in this point. Some people, you just put it at the top here, yeah, or you, you create a, what's it called? A constructor and you put it inside the constructor. You put inside the constructor for this. So that's so I can actually do that. Okay, so let's continue on this easy approach anyway. So now let's run it. So I think that should be that. Okay.
So, so like I said, if you you can move all this login page to inside the constructor, or you put it at the top. So just to make it neater. So the but just to make it easy for everyone to understand, I've I've done this in this this way. Okay, so yeah, someone said we should talk about reporting. I'm going to talk about that briefly uh, before we go now. Okay, so that is going. So I think that's 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 it, isn't it? So okay. What's the error? Okay. So I think that's that's it. So one thing that I need to do quickly is to yeah try to maximize that screen. So driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Yeah. So that will maximize the screen for us. Then after that I want to quickly say then I close the window. So I want to find out. Can I close the window? So this is going to just be driver dot close. Okay, cool. So that should close the window after that. So then also now let's make it a bit more. So now I'm going to copy that. Just create another two before we leave. Sorry, it's taking taking much of your time. I will do invalid ones. So in this one, I'll put, let's say, invalid password. So as you can see now, I say invalid password. I just copied that. The only one I need to write step definition for is this one, because that's the only one I just changed. The other one will still remain the same, and it will still be mapped to the old uh, step definition. So I just need to create the step definition for that. So for this, so now if I go to what's the enter password, so I'll go to the login page. The login page is enter password. So what I'm going to do is change that and say enter invalid password. So now, when I do that, I just want to say, okay, maybe it's not on my listening. Maybe it's just one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now I'm going to use this one in my step definition. So where is the enter password? Just copy the same thing, but then change that. So, well, 
I need n dot n time value password. Okay, cool. So that's what I want. So that is uh, those are two scenarios now. So I'm going to just use the verify to run them. So if you want to have, uh, yeah, you got your classes here, your target classes, which is called your. This is where your step, uh, what's it called? Your report should go into. I advise you to run it on verify. So, because I think from the pawn, it's actually targeted to verify. So we're going to run it on verify and we're going to check the report that's created. So I think normal situation, we should, we should make one of them to fail to be sure that our test actually works so so that it is not going to pass. So at least we know that it fails. And after it fails, then we can now make it to, to pass. That's the concept of TDD to test first. And the first thing you do is your test, you fail. Then after that, you should continue fixing the failures. So if you expect that to, yeah. Okay, that's screen, minus my screen. Okay, that was the first one done. So there seems to be an issue on that one because you should close that screen, so but it's not closed, so we need to know why that is. Well, actually, it actually finished that step, so this is the second scenario for the invalid scenario. We should yeah, maximize, click on login, then enter email address. And also invalid password, yeah. Cool. And click on login. Yeah, so all right, cool. So so then okay, I think that my okay, I shouldn't have you closed it. So after that Okay, no, you do, You cannot at, um, automate logging to your inbox or clicking at the eviction. Don't think you can. You can do that. So, it will. Yeah. So now, what you need to do is clicking around. That seems to be some error. I don't know why that is. Okay, unable to, yeah, unable to do, to get this one. Which is fine. Okay. So we have one pass, one failed anyway. So then let's go to the test report. Well, I think you need to install it first.
I think the, the issue with this one I've got issue with this because uh, the login one oh it's not supposed to be true because it's not going to find it so I think yeah there's an issue with that so if you go yeah I should be logged in. Should, this should be a start force. Dot a start force. Because it should not display it at all. So it's going to fail anyway, so let's see what we have. So what that one is doing, I'll go through what, why I changed that to false. Because error message is displayed, we are not expecting to see error message yet. It's not, there's no error message yet. So you are not expecting to be a start true. It should be a start false because that error message will not be displayed. So in that regard, it should be, it should not be true. It should be false because you should be logged in. When you are logged in, you are not expecting to see that error message is displayed. So you're expecting to see false. So that's why that is there. So, So I think another thing that we need to also to do is to change the other one also, login feature, to say then I should not be logged in. So this also should, should be a negative, should be negated. So then So that also should be that. So we need to use the same thing, but in this situation now, the opposite one. Similar like that, but in opposite way. So that should be as true. Because then you're going to see that. So that's why that should be as true. Okay. So So this is kind of, yeah, there's a better report that I'm looking for, but this is the one that we got right now. This particular one passed, and this is one that failed. So, and that failed, but that passed. So, okay, sorry, that passed, and that fails at, at this point. So it fails because it's saying that I couldn't find that element which I think is right because when you log in successfully you wouldn't actually see the error message a lot so and because we 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 actually say it should see it so that's the issue you should not see so we've fixed that I think this is the one that should fail because this one should be not so but right now when we run it again everything should be fine I think finger crossed so let's go to the pawn. I just want to check something quickly on the pawn. 
Oh, test ng So that should be so I guess clicking now. So it should be on verify. So okay. Yeah, it should be under that. So, okay, let's try, let's run it on the, on moving. So, see the, So I'm running that right now. That should have another folder called advanced reporting because that's what the pump says anyway. The pump says you should have another folder here. Yeah. So let's so yeah, I think it's taken to yeah, normally I think we should finish, but this is the last part of the training, so hopefully it will be done now. So I think it's trying to wait for that element to be visible. So I think it's doing the last one. So let's check the report. Okay, yeah, I will need to look into why that is not generated. That should be under that cucumber reports. 
advanced report. That should be yeah. Yeah, that should be well however you see how this pretty report, even though it's not pretty, it's called pretty anyway. So which is this one? Cucumber pretty. But there's another fancier uh, one that is better. So, which gives you a better one. So, yeah. So, that's what we're going to do today. That's the end of this one. Any questions? So, apologies taking so much time. I just want to finish this today. So, and by next week, we move into API and also SQL's. Uh, how to write SQL as a QA. Any question? Okay. I hope I've been able to trash most of the questions or issues. So if you look, watch the video, I think, and go through it and on step by step, you should be fine. So. I'll look into the reports, but however, I think you can also see there's a report already created, but the advance is not created. So, yeah. All right, so have a good night and see you next week for the remaining two sessions. So, for this.
Okay, I think that's that's it.